It was the winter of 2002. How do I know that date so well? Because we moved into this facility in June of 2002. And I began to cry because I realized I was building something that was going to outlive me. And there would come a time when I would have to turn this congregation over to someone else. And it broke my heart. That time has now come for me to turn our congregation over to someone else. So I'm announcing to you today that 2023 will be my last year as senior pastor of Brentwood Baptist Church. This is the guy that told me to learn how to love preaching with this guy right here. What impact did he have on your ministry? He was the one who showed me what could happen with words mm. from the pulpit. You see, this is, this is the church I grew up with. Yeah. These guys signed my uh, ordination. ordination certificate. How about that? This is, this is the lady that taught me scripture right here. There's, there's how it was when you were here. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah, That's my mom. Oh, really? How about that? That's my mom. <laughs> How about that? Mom and Dad, you sit right here. <laughs> right here. Well, gosh, this was, this was the center of everything. You know, I was here every Sunday, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. Dad was a Sunday school teacher. Uh, Mom was a pianist, and some of the most influential people in my life were a part of this church. I accepted Christ here, was baptized right up there by Brother Barrett, and then uh, when uh, Brother Kuykendall was here was when I came to the ministry, yeah. The times I think about this place mo most is when it gets hard, when you're in a bumpy place, when you're not and you fall back to some of the things that you were taught in, your, in the children's ministry here. Except some of those folks who, who, would, who loved you enough to tell you the truth and keep on telling you the truth. Even in sometimes when the truth went out of fashion, <laughs> they, would, they would still tell you this is, and, and you would grab hold to those, to those moments. My ordination, it became an incredibly precious moment as as all the men that had been part of my life since I was five sat around and told the story of the moment that they knew I was called. And it was all of these stories. And so it was one of the most affirming moments. Uh, and, and now I realize in uh, very, very treasured moments. But I always knew that this is what I would do. I've always known I would be a pastor. I was very different than most of the people that I knew who were going into the ministry and the people I met at seminary. It became very difficult for me because we were being, I was being told, if you're gonna be successful in ministry, you have to do it this way. And you have to be this kind of person and this kind of leader. And I wasn't any of those. I ended up trying to be David in Saul's armor uh, way too, too long before I finally said, I, I, I can't do this. And Jesus said, I never called you to, so, and, and allowed me to relax and be who I was. You and I are going to have to remember who we are, who we're called to be, here in Britain. Well, after Bill Wilson resigned, the church appointed a group of men and women to serve as a pastoral search team. And Mike's resume was one that rose to the top immediately. I don't think we had anyone else to consider but Mike. What I remember about Mike is he came in just an extraordinarily gifted communicator, enormous vision. He came in and um, had to overcome some initial challenges. The guy that follows the only pastor that the church has ever had usually doesn't last. Well. Every Monday evening, a group of senior adults would gather in, a, in the foyer at 409 Franklin Road for the sole purpose of praying for Mike Lynn. And I will never forget that because I asked one time one of the senior adults that was in the choir, and I said, 
tell me what you know, is that a Bible study? What is that out there? He said, no, we just pray for our pastor. That's it. When Mike came, uh, the biggest difference that initially that we saw was Bill stood bef- behind the pulpit uh, and Mike walked from one side to the other. And people came out of the first time Mike preached here and said, how do you keep up with him? He's all over the stage. I think Bill was a peaceful, uh, loving, uh, that kind of person. And I think Mike is one of the best preachers I've ever heard. The difference has been evident, but there's a place for both. I immediately recognized the charisma he had on the platform. And my wiring and my nature is so different from Mike. But I just knew that if I'm gonna share the platform with this guy, I need to be me, who I am. And I'm counting on God that I, that I compliment Mike. Unless there was somebody who could cast a vision that we could buy into and follow, the church would be stagnant and would not grow. And so um, I think that was another attribute maybe they saw in Mike. He sees the big picture down the, down the road, and then he just leaves it to us to figure out how to fill in the blanks to get us there. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. This is God's Word for God's people. May He bless the reading of it to our hearing. The first Reformation gave the Scripture back to the people. The second Reformation has given ministry back to the people. One of the, the, the most fun things you can do is sit with somebody and help them understand their giftedness and help them find their calling and then release them to that calling. That's the thing about this church is that the people are immensely talented and what they're looking, and, and they've never thought that they could use their talent gift to serve the kingdom of God. When you sit down with them and say, you know, this would work in the kingdom, or have you thought about using that in the kingdom? Then, then it just explodes. Mike has always had his finger on the pulse of the congregation and, and what God was doing among the people and was able to shepherd and steward that well. And when he saw God at work in an area, being able to call that out, point that out prophetically as a pastor, but to call those people to that work. I think his greatest legacy is his desire not to build things around him, but to give ministry away. Even if you feel inadequate, or even if in your story there's brokenness and you don't see your kingdom potential, he sees it. And I think the greatest thing a church can do is release in a person the gifts that God gave them and let them hear the calling that he has for them. I think that's been a message that Brent was had since the beginning. One of the challenges of the church is to tap those resources and make the man. They want to be involved and are quite capable. So that's exciting. If your heart is breaking for something and you come and say, what are you gonna do about this? It's very quickly gonna be like, how about you work with us on figuring that out? Everybody wants to have an encourager, um, somebody that sees what they're doing and says you're valuable and you were made for this. So that's what Mike would do. He would come alongside and say, I see you. I may not be called to that, but I love that God called you to it. And uh, how can I help you? You know, how can I encourage you and cheer you on in that? Mike's personality as a leader of our church is not to micromanage anybody, but just to say, this sounds great, go do it. My background is in special needs. I was a special ed teacher in the county, um, and several of my students went to church here. Our kids minister at the time said, I wish I could hire you. That would be so amazing to have someone come in and consult on that. And we met for seven years, Um, just talking about what that could look like and dreaming about that ministry. Finally, (laughs) we uh, got the opportunity to start, actually officially start the ministry. One of the best things about getting to do what I get to do is working with our young pastors, working with people like Jay and Aaron that now we have spent years together. You do remember that Jay and Aaron used to be the middle school ministers here. The first thing leadership-wise is he helped me grow as a pastor. He gave me opportunities, and then he would coach me. He would pour into me. One of the best things Mike Glenn has taught me is how to cast a clear and compelling vision that comes from the Lord and comes from Scripture. So that's one of the biggest takeaways I have that I will always carry with me that he put in me. There's a great gift to be able to learn to lead under authority. 
uh, because you get the chance to, to have a front row seat to watch without all the pressure being on you. And so Mike's uh, allowing us, even as campus pastors now, shepherding our own congregations, but to still not be out on a limb by ourselves, but to walk alongside of him, to learn from him and with him uh, has been such an invaluable gift. He often would say that I was his mentor in things about girls' ministry. He always was just championing and, um, and cheering me on. He surrounded himself with a staff that loves Jesus and they're really good at what they do. I love that he has enabled those of us who are passionate about something he may know nothing about to bring others to Jesus and bring others to our church by the work that we do. We want to always be a church that celebrates the number of people that we run off. We celebrate the number of people who come and the baptisms and the people who come to know Christ. Yes, that's always important, but we also want to be aware that in our congregations, God is gonna be calling out men and women, families, to start new churches in new areas of strategic importance. One of the things that, that Mike said, you know, he was a student of Bill Wilson, and he said, one of the things that I heard Bill say on more than one occasion was, if I could do anything differently, we would plant more churches. Mike's ability to say, man, Bill Wilson grew a healthy church from its, its inception. Now my opportunity to build on that, I want to take, you know, Bill, Bill was able to carry it this far, now I wanna take it you know, that next stretch. And of course, as the next senior pastor, I feel that responsibility uh, to build on the foundation that those, those two men have helped lay. It seemed like our church had a pivotal moment where it could have been that all of these campuses would have been Mike-centric in that all of these campuses would have been um, venues where his sermons were piped into. Had Mike not chosen to give ministry away and say, you know what's most important is to reach people with the gospel and we're not gonna keep asking him to come hear me, we would never have nine campuses. We would never be as big with the breadth and the span of influence with the gospel we have in the state of Tennessee, in Middle Tennessee, if Mike hadn't chosen to give ministry away. I think Mike's vision says, as we begin to establish other churches and help the weaker churches. It's amazing how many kinds of people we're reaching right now. So I call it all God's miracle, and I'm just sitting in the middle of it. God gave Mike the ability to be able to send and let go of the leaders necessary to make that happen. Mike was very excited to deploy uh, people like the Station Hill campus, the Avenue South campus, Nolensville, West Franklin, on and on it goes, and to our own communities. Mike not only uh, initiated that, but he championed that. There are times when I miss Bill, and I wish Bill were here to see what Brentwood is doing, because he would, he would love to see some of the things that we're doing. Everybody has a gift. Nobody has all the gifts. But everybody has something to bring to the body so that the body will continue to be strengthened to do the work that Christ is calling us to do so that we will continue to mature in the faith. What is the measure of maturity? He tells us, did you see it? So that you will grow into the stature measured by the fullness of Christ. That's gonna be his legacy. It's just how he's been able to have, uh, receive the vision from the Lord and, and help move people there. I also think that his legacy will be in mentoring others, equipping others, encouraging people to find their gifts, uh, discover their gifts, and to use their gifts uh, for God's glory and for the building of, of the kingdom. He is the foremost person in my life and in my ministry who helped prepare me to lead. He just has an innate ability to bless and affirm the giftings that God puts inside of people. And he did that for me. Part of Mike's legacy at this church, there's so many great things he's done for this church as a whole. And I'm just so grateful that he championed us from the very beginning. I don't mean a cliche. I think I think the best days of Broadway Baptist Church are ahead of us. And, and that's due in large part, huge part, of what Mike Lynn has done. Your best life between now and heaven is walking with Jesus Christ, that whole gospel thing. And, and that has been 
I would hope, the focus of, of my ministry and my life. This is God's Word. This is God's Word. This is God's Word. This is God's Word for God's people. Hear it. Hear it. Hear it. Believe it. Believe it. And live.